Well, it's another beautiful spring day out here in the Rockies. Welcome everybody to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. I'm Aaron, uh, hanging out, building a fire, having fun with my buddy Wes, and we're gonna talk tips, tricks, and safety with one of the best tools ever, hatchets. Wood processing with a hatchet is, I think, a vital just skill to have. I think it's very important if you do anything in the outdoors. Uh, you know, tools like a hatchet can do so much uh, for you. And so today, I just want to give you some uh, cool tips, some different techniques that you can not only split, chop, uh, shape, and carve wood with a hatchet. We'll go over some um, techniques also with a large, you know, like two-handed axe as well, uh, and just have fun. Now, what I'm sharing with you guys is not some secret formula that I've found out and discovered. Lots of people have done um, similar technique, you know, and, and tip videos and things like that. But I just want to share with you in a compact package uh, how you you can get the most out of a tool like a hatchet and to do it safely. So with that, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, guys, so we're going to jump right in with the safety tip, the kind of like the one that works for almost anything, chopping, carving, splitting, whatever it may be. And that's keeping yourself from breaking the vertical plane. Now, you yourself are the ver vertical plane, right? I'm standing here, I'm vertical and splitting your screen in half. Now, as I'm swinging my hatchet or axe, if I come down, and I break that plane, I'm driving straight possibly into my shin, my kneecap, and causing injury to myself. And so to prevent that, get yourself as close to the horizontal plane, and that could be a large log that you're splitting on, possibly a log on the ground fallen like we, we have right here, or just the ground in general. So if I'm coming down like this, now if I'm splitting or chopping, I'm gonna hit the horizontal plane way before I break my vertical plane. So that's a, a very simple safety tip that you can do regardless of it's chopping or splitting. Now I am going to show you a few techniques later where we kind of bend that rule a little bit, but you'll understand in just a moment how that still can be uh, safely achieved with some of these splitting tasks I'm going to show you. All right, so let's go ahead and start with chopping. I'm obviously low, again, close to the horizontal plane. And what's really good is a lot of times to have some form of wood log, stump, something to give resistance to your piece of wood. If it's on its branches that, of a piece of wood that's maybe fallen, a log, something like that, it's gonna absorb a lot of the shock and it's gonna take twice as long for you to get through that piece of wood. And then the second thing, lots of people, uh, particularly new to hatchets, they're just gonna go at like a 90 oftentimes, 90 degree angle to uh, the piece of wood. You wanna go more like 45 degrees and make a V chop when you're doing that. So just give us a little example here. Boom. See there, just removed a big chunk. go and you can see again this log is giving resistance so this log that I'm chopping is not bouncing all over the place it's giving me that resistance I need boom to go right through that sucker so that's a simple way to get the most out of your chop and keep all that inertia and energy going right in that wood and giving those 45 degree angles will really speed up the process when you're chopping now what if kneeling just really isn't very conducive to the environment that you're trying to chop as an example, I have this big dead fallen tree and I want to delimb a bunch of this, these dead branches. Well, then the best option is to keep it on the opposite side of your strikes, to not be on the same side that you're going to be striking the piece of wood so that, again, I have this log, this tree that's fallen as the break for that horizontal plane. Just to give us a quick example here. You can see there, if I miss, my hatchet is just gonna hit the tree itself and it's not gonna be going into my shin. And the benefit to just doing it smart and safe like this is then you have confidence to put extra energy into the hatchet, into the swing, like so, and then you're able to get the job done quicker. If you have less confidence in what you're doing because of safety or you're just not really familiar with the tool, well, then it's going to take you twice as long. You can see there again, the tree's going to block that. And I can do that all day long. I would just walk up, 
doing that and then I would just rotate and come down the other side, keeping the tree as the break for the vertical plane. So when I had the idea to make this video, I wanted to have a really well-balanced, good hatchet and ax and hardcore hammers came to the test. When I was thinking about what tools to use, these came to my mind and hardcore hammers I've been using for quite a while guys. And that's what I'm using in this video with the super naturalist, one of the sharpest, longest edge holding tools I've had and made right here in America really well designed tools, super well balanced. That's something you want to think about when you are, you know, going to be going out there and splitting wood and chopping how well balanced and just how does the tool perform? And that's part of it. And these guys work and balance so well together. Uh, the Supernaturalist right here, I got this nice little uh, Cordura fabric made right here in America guard, really nice, about three and a half inches to protect your handle, particularly on a wood handled hatchet from over striking when you go too far. That's going to have that right there. And you can put this on obviously any hardcore hammer, hardcore hammer ax or hatchet, but I also got leather versions as well that I got rocking here on the 28 inch three pound Raptor ax uh, that I'll be demonstrating a little bit later. But uh, man, I've been using their stuff for a long time. And there's a reason for it. It just makes woodworking very easy and you're getting a super high quality, well-balanced American made product with the hardcore hammers uh, options that are available. So there'll be links in the description box below guys. If you want to go check those out, uh, you can see all that they have going on, the different sizes, different options that are available um, that they produce. And let's keep on trucking and take a look at a few of these tips, tricks, and techniques. All right, guys, let's go ahead and split some wood and talk about some techniques. And this is where we get to have a lot of fun uh, and just show you again, keeping it safe and smart and getting the work done quick and easy. So I can't tell you how many times I'm at a campground and I see somebody trying to split wood with their hatchet and you know, they got sandals on and they're flailing the hatchet all over the place, breaking the vertical plane. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's kind of scary. So it's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video just as uh, you go out there and enjoy the outdoors to get the work done quick, easy, but also safely. So again, I'm low to the ground. I got this log right here, and this is a kind of a two-fold. Not only is that gonna save my edge if I miss and do a ricochet, but again, like with chopping, it's giving a nice dense um, resistance to the hatchet coming through. If I do it on the ground, I can do it in a pinch, but the ground will often absorb the shock, making it more difficult to split a piece of wood. So this is kind of the traditional, we've all seen it done, and I'll just do it real quick for us here. And again, even if I ricochet or miss, boom, it's gonna go right into the ground there. See? It's great because I can really have a sense of confidence knowing I'm going to be okay as I do this. And I can real whale. There we go. You can see that right there on that piece of wood and not be concerned about what's going to happen. Boom. Now, actually, that brings us right into a little tip here for safety. How many of you have tried to do this? And you're trying to balance this piece of wood and maybe it's not really conducive to standing and so maybe you're like putting your finger and you're trying to do it really close or you're trying to bite it or like hold and swing and get really sketchy super quick easy way to mitigate that is just grab another piece of wood balance your piece that you're trying to split boom it's not wanting to stand do a little balance there boom just like that, nice and easy. All right, so now there's a second way that you can split wood that I would argue is even more controlled and oftentimes I have more success with than trying to stand it and split it like we just saw. You lay it sideways, always looking for the grain. In this case, I have a little crack already started, so I obviously wanna work with the wood, not against it. Makes my job easier. Again, putting it right here, I'm gonna go near the top. You don't wanna go near the center. You're gonna be working all day. Go pick up an end of the piece of wood go boom look at that split that bad boy no problem this works really well um, with uh, really dense wood as well um, if it, you know it's not really dried out as much as you think you, it should be or maybe could be you can even kind of pinch it hold it that way boom look at that one swing right through there see that blade twist crack there you go so more often than not I'll actually split kindling this way than trying to stand it up and do that whole balancing act 
and all that. It just makes it a lot less energy, more controllable. I like having being in control of my tool. Go. Just like that. Okay, so here is our first technique that we're going to bend the rules of breaking the vertical plane. What you do is you have a cross log, and then the log that you are splitting, you try to get it as close to a 45 as you can. It usually ends up being around like 30 uh, degree angle, tipped up with one end going into the ground, so the energy is going into the ground. And then what you gotta do is wherever you're gonna contact the piece of wood, you want your heels to be past that. So if there's a ricochet, Again, though I am breaking the vertical plane, it's going past my body and therefore not going to cause me any injury or harm. And so what you do is you're just going to go straight through your legs, connecting, sending the energy straight through the piece of wood and into the ground. I love this technique here. Good crack. So this is this is really good with wood that you think is maybe beyond the limits of your hatchet. This is a pretty wide, knotted piece of wood. But I've already created two big cracks down it, so we're definitely doing what we want to do. There it is. Boom. There you go. So that's one way you can bend the rules and get a really big piece of wood split with an ax or hatchet. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna bend the rules on is called the golf swing. Um, again, I would argue that that last one I showed you and this one are more of like a pro technique. If you feel really confident with your hatchet, you're familiar with them, you can try these out. Um, always just be smart. But basically what we're gonna do, uh, and you're just doing a swing, and it can just be a backward swing. So I am breaking the vertical plane, but my connection point is past my heel. So again, if I have a ricochet, it's going past my body in that way. So let's just see here. Boom, look at that. Already sheared off a little piece. And you can always set it up against a tree or some sort of backstop to keep that inertia going right into the piece of wood there. go look at that we're getting it all the way down there it is Ta -da. sweet okay so up till now we've been doing the smaller hatchet for the most part and all of these examples can be done with a larger two-handed axe but I wanted to touch on one other option and just another way to kind of protect yourself with particularly the larger tools uh, is if you were gonna split wood uh, on the ground like this, to use some form of device, aka a log, a device, a log, <laughs> to uh, deflect the the strike if you were to miss uh, or something like that. You can always do that. And the nice thing with a longer tool anyway is that you will less likely break the vertical plane because of the longer handle, whereas those shorter hatchets, um, they're going to be going right into your shin. So I'm just going to use this log kind of as my deflection here. Boom. Obviously larger the tool, less precise, but the quicker you can split stuff. Boom, see that? That log stopped it right there for me and I could swing all day. So shaping is something that hatchets can do real well. It's good, just find the balance point that you're happy with and then you can really do work real quick and shape your wood into all kinds of different stuff. Hack it down for maybe a spear, maybe a cooking utensil, you're carving out a bowl, something like that, and you need to shave off a bunch of the wood. Hatch is a great tool for that. And then there is a way to be able to carve as well with your hatchet if you need to. Not ideal, that's where a knife is usually a little bit better, but if you have a good edge, you can see there, I'm choked up. I like to use my index finger kind of as the control point right there. And I can do a 
a fuzz stick almost as easily as any knife if I need to. Check that out. Right there, baby. Well guys, there you have it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope that this video has been fun and entertaining, but also informative, giving you just some data, uh, some quick tips and tricks, as well as safety ideas on how to best utilize your hatchets and your axes. So love to hear your guys' thoughts. You know, if there's maybe a technique that I missed that you'd like me to try or, you know, um, show in another video. Uh, and always love reading the comments and just the relationship that we have here at the channel. It's it's a blast. So um, look forward to reading all those comments. I invite you to check out the other video popping up uh, and to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. You can check us out on Instagram and Facebook and all the social media. Until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.